have a special Good Day PA for you today about a special young man from Central Pennsylvania. And while you may not know him personally, many of you will be familiar with his voice if you've ridden Hershey Park's roller coasters over the past few years. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for being with us. It's a good day, PA. I'm Amy Kim. And I'm Patrick Andrews. Now, most of the Mid-State has probably visited an amusement park at least once. And before those thrills and screams of a 100-foot drop, rides have a prologue, a speech loaded with riding instructions. You know them. Stay behind the yellow line. Keep your arms and feet inside the ride vehicle. Yeah, and many times that voice and those directions are drowned out by the commotion of adrenaline-seeking riders waiting in dreaded ride lines. But for others, those lines and speeches can provide a place of refuge amidst all the noise. Welcome to the Wildcat. Once you are seated, please buckle your seatbelt and then pull down on the orange safety lap bar. Thank you and enjoy your ride. Nick Panalone loved roller coasters, especially the Wildcat. It was an obsession that began at Kennywood Amusement Park in Pittsburgh. Jackrabbit has a double, a double hill to it. And as you go down the hill, it, it, it flattens out and then goes down again. We all get lifted up off our seats. And I remember as we lifted up our seats and I looked over at Nick, his eyes were big as saucers. Nick was hooked. He even built his own working amusement park in his basement using connects. By the time he was 11, he knew the color, the speed, the height of every major roller coaster in the world. I came home from school one day and he had a map laid out on the kitchen table. He picked a spot in West Virginia where he was gonna build his park. He had diagrams of the rides and he had Excel sheets of the cost. Everything was logical about it. He was 12 years old. At 12, Nick was planning his amusement empire. Two years later, he started his career. Unlike the one he had dreamed up on the dining room table, this park was already built, only 20 minutes from his home. He was only a yellow tag, so he couldn't actually operate the rides, but you would have thought <laughs> that he was going to work every day as like president of the United States. I think the joy he saw on people's faces as they were getting on and off the ride lit him up. He was in heaven. He always had these funny little quips that he would add to the ride speeches just before the ride would dispatch. All right, riders, ready for some fun? It's Wildcat time in three, two, one. Be a lion, not a cow. Hang on tight and say meow. It really just was engaging with the guests and it was engaging with the other employees. At Hershey Park, he loved everybody. Almost the old everybody. The people, the young people. He didn't like if you broke one of the rules. Oh. <laughs> The junior at Cedarcliff High School was in charge of life until one February morning in 2010. He was hit by a bus. Uh, Cedarcliff was under construction and I had dropped him off for school in the front and they had a chain link fence that had a walkway. The bus made an illegal turn. It didn't see Nick and it pinned him up against the fence. Nick recounted the day at Penn State's Bryce Jordan Center during the university's Thon event a year later. Following that day, I was completely unharmed, but my parents still thought it was a good idea to take me to the family doctor to get checked out. When the doctor laid him on the table to check his spleen and stuff, he started to feel around in Nick's belly area and there was something wrong. They found a multitude of tumors all around my abdomen and pelvis. And that's how they discovered that he had that rare cancer. And it was in stage four and we didn't know it. Nick had desmoplastic small round cell tumor, or DSRCT. The cancer is so rare, there were only 12 cases in the United States the year Nick was diagnosed. The five-year survival rate, 15%. Here is our healthiest kid, never had a cavity, never missed a day of school, and he's got a disease like this. But cancer couldn't keep him from doing the things he loved. From the stage... My dear, your eyes are like the streets of Paris. Cross. <laughs> ...to the classroom, Nick had outperformed his disease. I still do everything I do. Cancer hasn't deterred me from being valedictorian of my class. Um, 
Despite his academic successes, Nick's body was failing him. Chemo treatments forced him to delay his dream of going to Florida to study business and theme park management. He would instead go to Lebanon Valley College with hopes of transferring. Staying close to home meant more time operating the rides he loved. He soon became one of the youngest ride supervisors in park history. He would go get chemo and then go work at Hershey Park or he would go get chemo and then take someone else's shift at Hershey Park, take a double shift because that person had to go see their child or that person was sick or that person had to go to a funeral. People looked at Nick there as, it was Nick, not Nick with cancer, it was just Nick. He couldn't get enough of Hershey Park. Three years into his diagnosis, cancer was close to striking midnight and didn't care that Nick was smack dab in the middle of his fairy tale. One particular morning on, in February, as we were talking with him, he collapsed. Nick's tumors had spread to his lungs. The doctor said to start making arrangements because they didn't think he'd last the night. He did, then a few more. And they transferred him to another room, and that's where we played out the last month of his life. That room would become an unlikely stage for one last performance. It wasn't my idea. In fact, I'm not sure if it was a bunch of different people had thought about it, and it made complete sense when it was brought to my attention. We had to capture his voice, and we had to put him on his favorite ride. A week before his last breath, Nick would need every ounce of air for his final curtain call. At that time, Nick had so many tubes that it made it very difficult for him to talk. His voice was very raspy. We were allowed to be in the room, but we'd be super quiet. Nick had a manual. He would read out of... Keep your head firmly against the backrest. You will be reaching speeds of 58 miles per hour. So he kept practicing and practicing yeah. and practicing. He'd, he'd lose his breath, but then he'd all right, Rogers, like, gain all this momentum and then just give as many takes as he could. It was very tough for him. All right, Ryers, you ready? But he wanted fun? to do it right. Let's do this again. Can we do it yeah. again? Can we tape it again? I can do better. You could see the passion and the happiness that he had doing it. It was his last performance, and it's one that he was very proud of. It wasn't easy to do, but he did it. Hang on tight, save me now. It's more than just capturing a speech. It's also capturing a voice for a family so that they can have that always in their ear, so that they connect with their son, with their brother, for eternity. A week after making the recordings, Nick Panalone died on Palm Sunday in 2013. The Wildcat, Lightning Racer. The winner is Thunder. The Great Bear. Enjoy your 124 foot drop. And the Wild Mouse. Keep him alive on the rides he lived for. As we brought our daughter Ella there for the first time this year, uh, and to get to see her Uncle Nick's plaque and get to hear his voice uh, is incredibly special for us. Um, since she will never get to hear his voice with him here, at least we can go to Hershey Park together um, and she can hear him on the rides. Oh, it's, it's like Nick's looking down on us and he's still a part of us. He's still part of our family, so it's very special. It's surreal being able to hear his voice again. It's very hard, but it sounds just like him, and it reminds us just exactly of his happiness he had at the park. We're honored that Hershey Park allows our son's voice to be used, but we're haunted by it too. Uh, we're honored in the fact that they, they allowed him to do that and had such a regard for Nick. And we go there and we're very proud of that, but to hear our son's voice in that way makes us miss him all the more. So it's, it's great, but it's hard to listen to as a parent. But I hope they use it as long as they want. Unbuckle your seatbelt and exit to the left. All, all the way down. down the ramp. Thank you for riding the Wildcat and enjoy your day at Hershey Park.
Just a remarkable story. Remarkable young man, beautiful family. Well, it was a pleasure working on that story. I worked on it for almost half a year, and I got to spend many hours with the wonderful Panalone family. I wanted to, you to meet them as well. And coming up next, most of the Panalone family is live across our studio. We'll hear of amazing tales, other amazing tales from Nick's last month in the hospital. We'll be right back. We are back with our special edition of Good Day PA entitled A Final Performance. Just before the break, Patrick shared the story of a local young man, Nick Panalone, who recorded his voice for a few of Hershey Park's roller coasters just before he died of cancer three years ago. Now, Nick was the youngest of five in the Panalone family, and joining us is mom and dad, Vince and Carla, along with one of Nick's brothers, Phil, and the, one of Nick's sisters, Rachel. Uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Really appreciate well, it. Well, thanks for yeah. having us. Yeah. We're yeah. still recovering from watching that beautiful segment you put together for our son and for us. It was it was awesome. As I've told the Panalone family, it's, 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 it was tough telling that story, but I just really enjoyed working with them. Yeah. On it and uh, getting to tell Nick's story. He couldn't say enough wonderful things about you. Like every day he'd come to work and, and with such enthusiasm for this project and for you. So just well, I told you before the show, it, <laughs> it, his devotion to this really came from the most loving, sincere place. But I think you already know that. Well, we'll but be yeah. eternally grateful for what you've done for the memory of our son. Well, let's talk you know, about I, Nick. I'm so curious. <laughs> I mean, I, I've learned through Patrick, I mean, your son really had a thing for amusement parks, really for roller coasters. I mean, did every family vacation have to revolve around this for, for all of you? Once he got the bug on, on amusement parks, we tried to always tie in at least one amusement park. Even if we were going to the beach, we had to stop at an amusement park on the way there. And then there were times that even when we went to Disney, we had to make sure that we went to an amusement park that wasn't at Disney just to add on. For instance, going to uh, Orlando and then we would take a special trip to Tampa to, to see another one so yeah we try to tie them in that's really cool when I was doing the story there's a, there's a little story that when he was in the hospital that I couldn't even put in the piece because the piece was already very long and so I wanted to talk to you live on set John Lawn the CEO of Hershey Park came to visit Nick with something special when he was in the park what was that John Lawn was one of the executives there and came to see Nick at the, at the hospital in his last month of Nick's life and brought with him blueprints for a proposed addition to Hershey Park. And after visiting with Nick a little bit, he gave the blueprints to Nick and said, please take a look at them, take some notes, because I'm coming back, I want your thoughts on it. Well, wow. are you kidding me? <laughs> so of course, Nick went, to, when Mr. Lawn left, Nick went to work as best he could, taking notes, asking some of his other friends about it, and thank God, John Lawn came back, and this time John Lawn took notes hmm. of what Nick's additions or subtractions were to those blueprints. It's yeah. pretty awesome. You can you can see some of the blueprints here in the TV, just of what he, Nick was looking at. Um, Phil and Rachel, uh, do you think that Nick would still be working in a amusement park today? I think he found out at an early age what he was passionate about, and fortunately, at an early age, he was able to to follow that dream and, and how quickly he worked his way up, up the ladder at Hershey Park, I think, who knows, the, the, sky, the sky was the limit for him. Uh, and Rachel, Rachel, you're expecting soon. I am. So yes. we talked about Ella and the piece, Phil's daughter. Um, are you excited to take uh, We're very excited. child there? Um, it is a boy and we plan on his middle name being Nicholas. So oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> so we hope that he'll be able to go hear his voice someday too. You must be so proud of your son. Oh, my, with beyond words. Beyond words, that for everything he stood for, everything he lived for. Um, anybody that was around Nick knew that he loved life, and he showed us how to live. He and really he was did. always so positive about everything. He's still showing us. <laughs> he is. You know that, right? Like, he's oh my still goodness. showing us. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Wow. Okay, well, okay, well, we have more, believe it or not, to come. When we come back, we're actually going to have a surprise guest. For you, so <laughs> keep it right here on ABC 27. I'm excited for this. <laughs> we are back with the Pantalones talking about their late son and brother, Nick Pantalone, who is immortalized as the voice of select rides at Hershey Park. Now, during the recording just a week before his death in 2013, there are only a select few in the room with his family. One of those present was Nick's <laughs> boss, who orchestrated that moment. Joining us is Laura Woodburn operator of Ride Operations at Hershey Park. 
So Laura's gonna come through give a here. drum roll. Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> uh -huh. How are you doing, <laughs> Gloria? Very good. Oh, thanks, good Laura, you. for joining us. Hello. So, look, Laura, you are Nick's boss, yes. right? Uh, you're you're at the head of ride operations at Hershey Park. Uh, what stood out to you about Nick? Nick's passion. As you all know, he had such a passion, not just for rides and the, the amusement industry, but for people. And for someone at that young age to be so excited about people and serving people and making someone's experience at the park amazing, that really stood out for me. Hmm. I mean, did, to get somebody's voice onto a ride, I'm sure there's, there's kind of a process. Like, take me through that day. I mean, it was a really nice <laughs> gesture, but there were regulations. Like, how did this come to be? Why? Well, you know, these were the attractions that were most important to Nick. And the speeches, as you well know, at Hershey Park are very informative for safety reasons and messaging. And we wanted to make sure that we captured his voice, especially on the rides that he loved the most, mm -hmm. because we wanted that to live on. And uh, of course, it has to be just right. We have to have certain information in it. But he had these special sayings about these attractions. Mm -hmm. That's what we yeah. really needed to make sure got through to people. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to lose mm -hmm. that. We, we wanted to still hear him say um, the, the special things that he said on all of those attractions. It's, it's almost like a little scavenger hunt. If you go to Hershey Park, listen for those little it's special it's little speeches. They're really, really neat. I, I got to hear all of them while I was uh, doing the package, so or doing the story. So that was, I mean, that was neat. How long now can you, will you keep his voice on these rides? Next voice. As long as that ride stands, and as long as their speeches are relevant, Nick's voice will be on them. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> I didn't know that. Yes. Yeah. Oh. That's awesome. That is, that <laughs> is so cool. It is so did cool. You, when, when she first approached, did you guys think it was just a nice gesture, or, yeah. or did you know it was more than that? We were all, we were honored. Yeah. We were in oh, awe yeah. of the idea of it. In fact, um, since you put the the voice in the rides. Every year we go back, mm -hmm. are they still using Nick's voice? And then someone will report back, yeah, it's still Nick's voice. Mm -hmm. So now that we don't have to keep going back to check, but we will anyway. <laughs> oh, welcome. You're welcome to come back. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. It's awesome. It's yeah. awesome. Nick, Nick felt so honored, too, that they wanted mm -hmm. his voice. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. he was so thrilled. Just, just the gesture meant so much to him. Oh, you know, yeah. Just it, yeah. And one thing I wanted to point out is that Nick did get to hear his voice in the recordings. Hershey yes. Park turned that around. Nick got to hear that, and that's oh, fantastic. So. That is so neat. Well, we'll be right back with another surprise for the panel on family. Before we head to break, <laughs> Nick had been encouraged to write a blog updating family and friends on his battle with cancer. Those blogs were compiled into a book. You can read Nick's story for yourself from his perspective with commentary from his father, Vince. The book, Keep Moving, Moving Forward, A Boy's Journey, Riding the Roller Coaster Called Cancer, is available on Kindle only. To purchase the digital book, just go to Amazon.com. And a portion of those proceeds from the book benefit the Four Diamonds Fund, which had meant so much to Nick. We'll be right back. Well, we're back with the Panalone family now, and Laura here, I believe, has a special gift on behalf of Hershey Park. Earlier, Vince told us a story of how Hershey Park's John Lawn visited Nick in the hospital and let Nick kind of borrow that five-year plan, and now you can always have that memory on your wall. With, with Go ahead, Laura. Frame. Show it to me. Right. Um, as a token to you, this is a picture for your family from Hershey Park and Hershey Entertainment Resorts. This is the cover, if you will, of the master plan that Nick had received. So when he was oh. a young boy planning his amusement park, he got to peer into the future of his home official park at Hershey Park. So I know this is meaningful to you. This is the legitimate cover from that so that you can keep that in your house and remember him. Well, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you on behalf of all, all of the panel owners. And it's, it's quite a memory and we'll treasure this. Uh, I'm sure she'll find a special place to hang it. <laughs> yeah. and, and there might be a fight about which home it goes to, but I'll tell you what, uh, no, it's staying at our house. Come and see it. Mama, yeah. Mama's going to win that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you very Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you for sharing Nick with us at Hershey. Oh. Oh. It was awesome. Hershey Park was so great with this story, and uh, when I reached out to them, I, you know, we had discussed doing this for you guys, and I knew how much the story meant to you guys, and I knew from your face telling the story when I interviewed you that day, that uh, that master plan that day was just was just phenomenal. So. Well, just that moment in Nick's life, he felt his dream come true because he was helping design something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And at that point, he needed that. It was awesome. <laughs> it was just perfect. It gave him like another oh. burst of life. It just yeah. like a mission. Mm -hmm. Well, on that note, make, make it, it a good, a good day, day PA. Day. <laughs>